1931 Ford Model A. Neat little car, pretty much all original. And if you don't know me, I'm Jason. I own Coverts, and well, we fix old vehicles. And this guy came in for some turn signals because they didn't have any. More on that later. And just some general maintenance. So let's take a look. I'll show you some of the, uh, I guess, oddball features, which were probably pretty standard back in the day. And to us, you know, they're probably weird. So come on, let's go look at this thing. Okay, let's start inside the cab here, and you, as you can see, it's pretty, uh, pretty normal car stuff, which, you know, if you didn't know, Cadillac in 1916 is the one that kind of standardized all the pedal stuff, because before that, it was just wherever they landed, that's where they landed, and you, the uh, driver, had to figure out what each one did. So basically, let's start over here. This is your door lock. And there's only one. One over here, none over there. We'll talk about that when we get to the outside. Here's your uh, door latch. And of course, you know, windows roll up and down. Standard stuff, right? Well, moving over to the steering wheel. This is for your timing advance. So basically, you can adjust that, I don't know, for bad fuels warmer weather, colder weather, altitude, whatever would affect engine timing. And of course, horn. <laughs> Go to Ugo horn. This is your lights. And a hand throttle, which I suppose was, you know, their cruise control today, which that is nice. And gauge stuff, standard gauges. That is fuel level. Trying to get out of the light here. There's your speedometer and odometer, which this thing spins this way instead of having a dial on it. And, or a needle rather, and that is your amp gauge. So this is a six volt car, positive ground, so the positive battery goes to the um, chassis, which a lot of this stuff was. Basically, that guy there on the left is your gas pedal and that is just a foot rest that's how you start the thing that's your starter so basically you turn the key on and then you hit your starter button with your foot and of course a brake and a clutch coming up over here there's your stick shift this is a three-speed non-sync road transmission so what that means is you need to Basically, double clutch this thing or you'll grind it into every gear. And it does go in every gear when you grind it, but you know, you try to avoid that. And this stick here, it's your emergency brake. So, more on the, the double clutching thing. So, basically, if you don't know, and I didn't know, I'd always heard, you know, double clutch stuff, but this isn't my era. You don't have to. Most everything is synchronized mesh. So, basically, to double clutch, you obviously start out in first gear. And when it's time to shift, you push your clutch in, that's normal. And then you go back to your stick and you put it in neutral and then you let the clutch out. And what that does is it kind of normalizes the speed between everybody, between engine, transmission, you name it. So once everything's in neutral and that clutch is out, you push the clutch in again and then you put the stick in the next gear. So, and then you let the clutch out. There you go. And it that won't allow it to uh, grind. It goes in nice and smooth doing it that way. So, makes it good. And if you don't know what this is, it's what they refer to as like a suicide knob. So basically that's what makes it easy to drive because there's no power steering. You are the power steering. And that is the interior in a nutshell. No seat belts, nothing, no amenities, no air conditioning, no heater. Yeah, pretty simple. All right, let's move on to the outside. Motor stuff, engine stuff. So here it is. This is a four cylinder. Makes a whole like 30-ish horsepower. And check out them spark plug wire strap thingies. Pretty neat. That's your distributor. There's your coil. And that's that rod right there. 
that attaches to the steering column. That's what advances your timing. So yeah, and as you could see down there, she leaks oil. I think all this old stuff leaks. Yeah, there ain't no oil under them. There ain't no oil in them. And that is a modern alternator. It would have had a generator on it. So these alternators are better than a generator. They charge a little more. And the fan blade looks like a airplane prop. Really neat. And right there is your water pump. Very, very simple. Let's go to the other side. Now we're at the other side. Let's lift this up. This is a this hood folds in half. So just like that, makes it kind of easy to work on. So instead of the hood going up that way, they fold in half, pretty neat. Here's the other half of the motor. You can see the distributor, that guy right there. Here's your exhaust manifold and your intake manifold and a little updraft carburetor that the standard features. And this guy goes in the engine or the interior and spins so that can adjust your uh, fuel flow, your richness is the words I'm looking for. And that's also how you uh, choke this thing. You just pull it out, puts fuel in the carburetor and yeah, fires up less like that. Here's more on the water pump. You can see you have to grease it. There's packing and stuff in there that is important to keep well lubed. Down to just a single belt. I said no power steering. Very, very simple. Here's your fuel line that comes up here. Somebody added that. That's your fuel shut off. Here's your factory fuel shut off. And there's your factory fuel tank. Yeah, it sits right above you. Right in the cabin with you. We'll go over here, I'll show you. There's the rest of the fuel tank. Pretty crazy that they would do that. And here's this uh, fuel thing I was telling you about. See, it spins and that adjusts the stuff on the carburetor for your richness. And you just pull it out like that, it's spring-loaded. Simple. So that's your engine in a nutshell. Let's move on to uh, the brakes, I guess. If we come down here, I'll show you. So drum brakes, all four corners. You need to adjust the shoes out manually because they will not adjust out like a modern vehicle. So that guy right there is your adjuster that adjusts the shoes to the brake drum. This guy is what runs it. So these are full mechanical brakes. There's no hydraulics whatsoever. There's a mechanism underneath the car that runs all these rods. So there's a rod on each four corners. And you push the brake down, it mechanically moves this. And then runs you out to your out to your brake shoes. Simple. What's not simple, I shouldn't call it not simple because it's still simple, is you need to adjust all of them clevises kind of equal. So each wheel pulls equal because it will pull side to side if the front's are out of whack. And where this thing came in, this was the only wheel that was pulling brake wise. The rest of them weren't. And when you was on the brakes hard, it about ripped the steering wheel out of your hand. Not fun. So now we got them all adjusted. They're still not the greatest. Um, they're probably just glazed and old, you know, because it's almost 100 years old. And I don't know how old the brakes are. 19 inch tires, running boards. Here we come back to our tail lights that we installed. There was only one on this side, and I'm pretty sure that was original ish. So we put a matching one on this side. There's our turn signals we put in. We'll talk about that real briefly while we're here. So this is a turn signal module. This is a kit that they bought, and this is magnetic. And it comes with everything you need. And I'll just turn the four ways on. Yeah, it's annoying, but you can hear it. So the four ways, will stay on until you shut them off, I believe. And the turn signals, they'll shut off after four minutes after a self cancel if you forget to turn them on. LEDs, you can see them blinking. There's two more on the front. Go look at them quick.
There you go. Yeah, that's a nice little kit they bought. Can't hate on it. Like I said, it's a six volt car, no 12. That kit is a six volt kit, so it'll work just fine. All right, moving on, what else? Let's close this. And I tell you what, before we start this thing and back it out, let's, uh, let's talk about the heating and air conditioning, right? So here's the air conditioning. That guy flips open and it's got these little thumb screws there that you know, hold it wherever you desire or you can close it. I already showed you the uh, wind down window and that's, that's it for the air conditioning side of things. And the heater stuff, Hang on, I gotta open this again. There's a like a manifold that goes over top of this manifold and directs the engine heat into that tube which goes inside. So I'll show you that. It goes on. He fits kind of down in there. That's pretty much it. And I don't know if that was a factory deal or if Autolite made that, I don't know. Either way, it's neat. Probably works okay-ish. Um, I guess if it's real cold, you just don't need to go out. You know, 1931 to stay home. So there's that. That is basically, that's your heater, that's it. And if you get too hot, you know, you just flip open your windshield. Which, he's got an itty bitty little wiper on it, which is vacuum control, not electric. What else is not electric is if you didn't have a starter or a battery, you hit a hole for a crank. So you could crank start this thing. You stick the crank through there, it engaged on the front pulley of the motor, and it would turn it over and fire it off and off you go. All right, let's fire this thing up and get it outside. Interestingly enough, this thing starts like a modern car, kinda. Very close to it. Let me uh, get myself in here and I'll show you guys. Oh, get in. So these aren't the most spacious thing in the world. Clutch in, key on, make sure it's in neutral like any modern vehicle. And like I said, your start switch is down there. We're gonna give this a little pull because I already had it pulled and running. Find your start switch. Give her a little bit of throttle. Give her some more of this. There you go. Okay. See your amp gauge over there working as soon as I get out of the way. Alright. Now, I'm going to try to drive this thing and not hit anything. Clutches in. Reverse is up here. Here we go. Don't hit nothing. And it just it runs really good. I might have it idled up a little bit. right there. Well, that's part of the cap. And that little vial there would move up and down and basically tell you the temperature of the motor if it's boiling or whatever. I don't know if this would still work. I haven't seen it move, but either way, neat piece. All right, let's open this guy back up. There you go. No fan shroud, this hangs out there. You wouldn't want to get your fingers in that thing, man. It'd tear you up. Very simple car. Very, very simple car. And I can tell you that these cars are a handful. It's fun to drive, because it's different, but 
it's a handful to drive. You got to watch brakes. You got to hang onto the steering wheel. So there's no eating McDonald's and texting and uh, you know changing your CD player because well there is no CD player in the car, so you can't do that anyways. So just I guess sing to yourself. But yeah, you got to pay attention to this thing. Fun car, fun fun car. So one other really neat feature that these had. Now this is uh, I guess what they consider a coupe. And that guy right there, that's not a trunk. This is what they were referred to as a rumble seat or a mother-in-law seat. Oh yeah, stick your friends back there, your mother-in-law, you won't have to listen to her gab. Just listen to it though. Just take a second, just listen. simple car. And I'm sure in 1931 when this was new, this was car was a big deal. You know, this was a big upgrade from the Model T. Big, big upgrade. This is why they made a, a ton of these things and sold a ton of them. And I'm caught. Let go, car. These are just very robust machines. All right, I'm gonna call it a day here. I think I showed you guys enough. I hope I did anyways. Thanks for watching. As always, like, share, subscribe. If you don't wanna give us a subscription yet, just give us a like. I know some of you guys are afraid of commitment. So, we'll see you on the next one. Keep doing your thing. Before I let you go, I bet you, uh, you thought I forgot about that uh, door lock thing that we talked about earlier in the video. I did, so you're going to get it right now. So, back in the day, they wanted you to get out on the curb side, so they only put a lock on this side. So, there's no lock here. See? That side has a lock, so you lock that side, scoot the butt across the street, it's a seat. Get out over here, shut your door, and you lock it with the key. So look, look on the other side here. Come with me. Right there. See? No door lock. So to get in it, you just repeat the, the process of getting out of it. Yeah. Who would have thought? And they carried that all the way through till I don't know when, but we got a 53 or 4 truck we were doing for a gentleman, and that is the same way. So I don't know when they eliminated that. Yeah. Okay. I'm really done now. Thanks for watching, guys. See you in the next